My name is Hiromi Dolazi from Vasa College. And today's talk is, uh, the title is Gender Representations in uh, Girls Manga. Um, I originally, um, I'm studying, my background is, um, I'm a researcher of girls, uh, magazine culture and stories. And then um, after the war, uh, pre-war girls magazine, magazines eventually developed uh, sort of you know, changed into girls' comic magazine. So uh, in that connection, I started um, learning about shoujo manga, and then, um, yeah, I'm, I'm still studying manga. So um, there are various shoujo manga stories and diverse shoujo characters, character images, regardless of stories. However, female gender stereotypes and normative female images, I think, always persist. So let me briefly go over the history of early shoujo manga. Shoujo manga started to appear after the war uh, around the 1950s. One of the popular plots of early era was about uh, emotional connections between mothers and daughters. This is a cover of um, manga comic uh, by Maki Miyako originally serialized in Libom magazine. Usually heroines are separated from their mothers because of some tragic circumstances. And uh, somehow heroines are always ballerinas. <laughs> I don't know why. The heroines uh, endure difficult situation and persevere. And then uh, story always have happy endings. And usually mothers appear as symbol of happiness. And then uh, mothers are given to the heroines as, as if they are rewards for being good. These mothers are always portrayed as beautiful. They all possess big shiny eyes, um, which are identical to their daughters. As you can see in this uh, image, they look kind of similar. But what does it mean? I think that mothers are presented as daughters idealized future images. These mother-daughter stories teach the audience to appreciate their mothers. The function, function of mothers in this kind of manga is to help readers smoothly transition from girlhood to womanhood. It's interesting to see the flourishment of girls' comics around that time came in tandem with the emergence of children's toy culture. In 1967, uh, the Rika Chan doll, I think many of you Japanese <laughs> with Jap uh, grew up in Japan, uh, probably play with, played with this doll. Uh, Rika Chan doll, Japanese version of Barbie doll was produced and Rika-chan's face and physical proportion were modeled after shoujo manga character drawn by uh, Maki Miyako, as you can see in this uh, manga illustration. Maki Miyako was known for a series of mother-daughter manga stories. Unlike Barbie dolls, Barbie dolls. Uh, Rika-chan uh, has childlike facial features, gentleness, uh, rather than beauty, characterizes this doll. Rika-chan belongs to a modern family. Um, Rika's mother, father, and twin baby sisters were simultaneously produced and sold. Also, playhouses for Rika's family were available for children to play. I always wanted this play doll. The uh, playhouse, but my uh, parents didn't buy buy me one. <laughs> Through this doll, Japanese girl learned traditional female role and women's domestic responsibilities, such as cooking, washing, cleaning, and and more importantly, child rearing. Through reading manga and playing with dolls girls were constantly reminded of future roles as mothers and caretaker of the family. I think nothing is wrong with cooking, cleaning, and uh, child rearing, but I think uh, this kind of enforcement, uh, giving one sort of uh, gender or, you know, role, role 
is, I think is a problem. In 1953, however, epoch making uh, manga started being serialized in girls mag manga magazines. The manga's name was Princess Knight, created by uh, Osamu Tezuka, best known for his Astro Boy. Princess Knight became the first manga that featured a brave and strong heroine who fights against evils. This manga is considered an important piece that changed the image of shoujo and influenced the later shoujo manga culture. But let's look at the manga carefully. Was the manga really revolutionary? Despite the active and brave and strong image of the shoujo heroine, we can still see some conservative aspects and cultural gender expectations. The story is about the princess Sapphire. Uh, because of the trick of an angel in heaven, she was born with the soul of both boy and girl. Because her father and mother, king and queen, did not have a son, Sapphire was raised as a prince who would inherit the throne in the future. However, there are villains who are waiting for the chance to overturn the king's power and steal the throne. So Sapphire fights against them to protect the peace of the kingdom. So uh, please look at um, the way Sapphire's genders are depicted. So here's a fighting scene. When she is a boy, she looks brave and confident and quick and she, her face is always looking up and, um, and very quick in action. But when she's a girl, she looks passive, gentle, and often shed tears. In these images uh, on the right, right side, she's exactly the same costume, right? But uh, when she turned into a girl, she um, somehow become really passive. Although the idea of fighting heroines sounds revolutionary, the representations of male and female genders are clear-cut binary and quite stereotypical. Over-exaggerated femininity and masculinity actually uh, enforce the gender stereotypes and the images associated with each gender. So this is uh, what critics actually said, and also included CJ's forthcoming book <laughs> on uh, manga. Yeah, he, there is a chapter. Ah, okay, so, sorry. <laughs> also, when uh, Sapphire fights, uh, she often covers up her female body because fighting is culturally assigned only for boys. She always co uh, also covers up her big and shiny eyes on the, the uh, yeah, image on the right, right side, um, because eyes are a symbol of femininity. Her eyes are identical to cute little, even like cute little animals. These eyes are, signs of, the, uh, of um, her weakness and vulnerability. In the story, Sapphire falls in love with Prince in the neighboring kingdom. Uh, Sapphire starts to agonize over her male gender and is assigned by her parents and realizes that deep inside her mind, she wish, wishes to become a girl and to be loved by Prince. In the story, especially after her encounter with the neighboring prince, Sapphire switches back and forth between male and female genders more frequently than before. The story ends with Sapphire's marriage. After choosing the female gender, she no longer goes back to a boy. Princess Knight introduced the idea of fighting uh, to the world of shoujo. But conservative view toward female gender is still present. So there are a lot of uh, fighting uh, girl characters uh, in the 70s, 80s, in the world of shoujo manga. And then slowly start to progress, I think. And finally, kind of big jump, but 
How did the fighting girl character transform over time? In 1992, a smash hit manga called Sailor Moon was published. Unlike Sapphire, Sailor Moon does not hide her femininity or female gender identity while fighting. Without switching her gender, Sailor Moon fights to protect the world from the villains. Uh, actually, I, for this presentation, I bought 10 volumes of Sailor Moon and the story is quite complicated. How can kids understand the story? <laughs> but anyway, but really fascinating uh, if you read carefully. The main character is ordinary junior high school girl, Usagi. She's lazy, clumsy, and not good at studying. But readers later learn that she is actually a princess from the moon and has a mission to protect the world. When Usagi needs to fight, she transforms uh, into a fighter, Sailor Moon. Although not, not much different, <laughs> to, to, to be honest. She kind of burgeons up, I guess. Her sailor color costume, mini skirt, and ribbons assert her identity as a girl. When she transforms into a warrior, she makes up uh, or dresses up, as well as power up. There are some unique points about the heroine Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon is from the future and is actually, she's a mother. In the future world, Sailor Moon is married to a, a prince Endymion, who is in the present world appear as a high school boy named Mamoru and is a boyfriend of Usagi. So this scene uh, on this screen, uh, there's a girl who looks identical to Usagi uh, dropped down from the sky. And her name is Chibi Usa, who came from the future is, and is actually the daughter of Sailor Moon slash Usagi. So mother and daughter story <laughs> encounter, <laughs> encounter to each other. And then a uh, strange thing, I, I think it's quite interesting, but uh, this Chibiusa is in love with Mamoru, Usagi's boyfriend. And then Chibiusa follows him, follows him around. So Usagi gets jealous and even fights with Chibiusa. So Chibiusa is Usagi, supposed to be her daughter. So they are fighting over um, Usagi's boyfriend, Mamoru. So mother-daughter competition over the love interest is depicted here. The mother in this manga start, uh, was not the protector of a child, but the competitor. Throughout the story, however, Usagi learns to appreciate Chibi, uh, Chibi Usa and learns to work together with her. And um, Usagi, Sailor Moon does not age. I guess she ages, but um, at the age 20 or something, uh, she stops aging. Even in the future, when she's a mother, she looks like a girl. So here's a scene, uh, Chibi Usa and uh, uh, Sailor Moon, the future of Usagi or Sailor Moon uh, reunited. So she looks like exactly like Sailor Moon. Osagi. The cultural image of mother is modified and recreated in this manga. Another characteristic um, of this manga is that Sailor Moon does not fight alone. Uh, there are Sailor soldiers uh, whose roles are to support and collaborate with Sailor Moon. Friendship and teamwork are presented as an important value in this manga. Some characters don't have parents. Even if they do, they seldom appear in the manga. So these characters are not confined in the notion of family and uh, bonded, not bonded by uh, family obligation. So I think there is an intention um, behind the uh, uh, creator or publisher. And then also editors were pretty deeply involved in the creation of manga. So here's a quote. Um, 
Uh, Ayano Hagiwara, an editor of Shoujo Manga Magazine, states that since 1990, there has been an increase in the number of women working in publishing industries. So editors are often involved in creating plots and work closely with manga artists, which I think includes uh, Sailor Moon. Fighting girls in manga and anime reflect the desires of working women in reality. They want to see more powerful girl. So um, the intention to empower girl audience uh, seems to be there um, behind the story. Also, um, you probably know, but um, there are LGBTQ characters, uh, Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune. So in original manga, uh, same-sex uh, love, romantic romance is nuanced. Uh, but in um, uh, when it was um, uh, made into anime and then um, broadcasted um, in a, on a TV in the US, that was their relationship was um, covered up and then uh, they are supposed to be cousins. So I guess, uh, you know, like creators uh, consciously include LGBTQ characters and then um, you know, more open to gender, um, you know, minority and, uh, you know, try to uh, depict, take it more flexibly, flexibly I guess. So uh, is Sailor Moon a re revolutionary manga that broke Japanese convention and reinvented the image of a woman? Mother? <laughs> girl? No. Uh, what? I think one of the criticism is that the female characters are over ex, uh, sexualized. Um, um, you know, Sailor Moon and Sailor Soldiers are exposed to the male gaze. And then these toys are not for kids, but for adult male. Uh, you can easily find uh, these kind of dolls or figure uh, in Akihabara and places like that. From perspective of children's education, some people uh, raise concern. The anime version of Sailor Moon eliminates sexual depictions and violence, but are not sure about uh, whether the story is appropriate for little kids. Um, toy companies also, uh, they are also concerned about the Sailor Moon merchandise, which is excessively produced for little kids. So I think shoujo manga could be a very useful tool to discuss the notion of gender, uh, either critically or positively. Um, oh, and um, I want to mention um, the uh, talk about students manga project. There are a lot of students who are interested in creating manga. And uh, currently, one last semester, one of my students uh, the translation of this manga, Hibito Chojo, typical shoujo manga. And then she particularly um, created a list of uh, onomatope. There are a lot of like onomatope, zoro zoro, scha, kokuri, peko peko. And then this semester she's uh, making her own manga. Like you can see, fuki fuki, wiping tears and one, ahaha, ahaha, it's like laughter. Um, but uh, these characters are, are from, um, I think some of you are uh, Japanese language teachers. Uh, these are Mary and Takeshi characters from Genki Japanese textbook. <laughs> so uh, this student created a story after, uh, yeah, after the textbook. And then here's another student working on a, a horror, like scary story. And then this uh, girl is supposed to be a ghost. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think um, not just uh, you know talking about gender in class, but I think uh, having students produce that is uh, makes the you know manga teaching uh, quite interesting. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.